let's get started. Before I go into my speech, I wanted to do a few presidential shout outs um, because it's always important, you all, when we realize how much hard work goes into uh, what we do. Sometimes we make it look so simple and so refined, but, but, but there are a few people I'd like to just say uh, thank you to. So let's start from the beginning here. Um, to the best student services and enrollment management unit this side of Mississippi. Could you all please stand? Could, could you all stand? Enrollment management, student services. Yeah. Thank you. I know firsthand what it takes to pull off what we were able to accomplish this fall. And your work, passion, dedication, and expertise have not gone unnoticed. Uh, you never wavered in your commitment uh, to provide the very best service despite the big and new challenges, despite the temporary space, uh, despite the long lines and short tempers. So thank you on behalf of the campus. Uh, once again, to a facilities department that has been hit hard with personnel departures and transfers, but knows how to take a licking and keep on ticking. Facilities, stand up again for us. Stand up, facilities. We know that you are, you know, small in number, but you're still mighty, and we still acknowledge that you have a hard task ahead of you. You have uh, 4,000 plus students, plus faculty and staff, and visitors walking this campus, and we know how difficult it is, but please hang in there. Uh, we're going to continue to support you, okay? Um, I do have a few more shout outs, but that will come a little bit later on, so uh, let's get started. One year ago, I stood before you in the Ed Center to continue a dialogue about the long view. For those of you who may be new, the notion of this long view was based upon a book written by Peter Schwartz, where he suggests to act with confidence, one must be willing to look ahead and consider uncertainties. One question was, what challenges could the world present us? Another, how might others respond to our actions? He continued to write that rather than asking such questions, too many people react to uncertainty with denial. They take an unconsciously deterministic view of events. They take for granted that some things just can't and won't happen. His examples include oil prices will not collapse, or the coal world won't ever end. Is it possible that one year later, we've created similar higher education blind spots for ourselves? Think about it. No, there is no way that enrollment will decline by more than 700 students in one year. It is not possible that there will be sweeping federal legislation which will limit the number of hours our part-time faculty will be able to teach. It just can't and won't happen that financial aid will be restructured with a focus on satisfactory academic progress. Unless you've been waking up from a long and deep sleep, you do realize that the aforementioned blind spots are now a reality. Friends, you and I both understand that there are more than enough examples of these blind spots to suggest that it is no longer an option, but rather an obligation to mitigate these blind spots. So for the remainder of the time, let's look to the blueprint. You see, we start off with the preamble, which states, we, the faculty, staff, administrators, and students of MCC Longview, believe in the mission of the community college, where our focus is based on teaching and learning throughout the institution, promoting inclusion, being informed by data, progressing towards student success with the goals of effectiveness and excellence always at the heart of what we do. We took that preamble as a campus and we built it based on six values. And those six values are appreciation, meaning we'll show genuine support for one another and thank each other. We won't tear each other down. Inclusiveness, meaning that we want to build a broad base for all thoughts, ideas, race, creed, and individuals to be able to come together and feel welcomed and be successful. It means excellence because that's at the heart of what we do. That's a part of our legacy. It means engagement. 
inside and outside of the classroom, not just in one arena, but in many arenas. It means integrity. We will honor what we say that we will do. And it means sustainability, that it's not only important to have programs and activities and, and this campus the way it once was for years ago, but what will we do to make sure it's like that tomorrow and for years to come? You see, last year I described what it would look like to take the long view in the area of people. Since then, we've added quite a few um, faculty members and staff members to Longview. Five of those positions came as a direct result of the Blueprint Goal 1, Objective 1, Strategy 1.6. We talked about the Blueprint with the understanding that all of us are doing something to help our students. But if everyone lifts together and moves in the same direction, progress will be more evident and enduring. That's why I am elated that over 100 faculty and staff indicated a desire to lift and move in a single direction. If you've not talked with your department or division leader yet about getting involved, I personally ask you to please consider doing so and joining us in this work. We talked about how important it was to nominate and promote the recognition of personnel in the wider community. And as a result, Rory Peridin received the Governor's Teaching Award and was also recognized at the Cheer Academy Conference in St. Louis. Our very own Nancy Walker was Longview's nominee for the Classified Staff Achievement Award. Nancy, will you please stand? And Casey Reed was our nominee for the Mel Aids Faculty Innovation Award. Shout out to Casey. And it is my privilege and honor today to announce that Lisa Fannin, our financial aid supervisor, will be honored with the MCCA Senior Service Award in November. Lisa, can you please stand? We dreamed about what it would be like to have a comprehensive enrollment management plan under Goal 1, Strategy 2.1. And now that the plan has been developed, it is important for all of us to understand our contribution to recruiting students. Long, are the day, long gone are the days of build it and they will come. It is indeed a blind spot to think that we're the only and the best higher education opportunity in town. You see, recruitment is part art and part science. Our automotive program knows that firsthand. They know what it takes to rebuild a brand and develop a collaborative approach to recruiting a wonderful array of students. In fact, in order to meet our desire of fostering and welcoming a successful environment for all people, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender, generation, and religion, today, I am formally charging the Presidential Commission on Inclusiveness to initiate its work effective September 1st. Last year, I described what it would look like in the long view in the area of places. Since then, we started to refresh certain areas around campus, from IT areas and storage spaces, shout out to ST, to hallway and classroom furniture, from the work and thought that went into creating the best design enrollment management center in the district, <laughs> to certain offices finding a new home. Within this goal, we focused on creating places that allow students to reflect and meditate access to computers prior to the start of classes, ga gaining assistance with services, uh, or whether taking classes in the morning, afternoon, or evening. In addition, we revived our commitment to becoming a sustainable campus by disposing of waste properly, using alternative forms of energy where possible, and conserving precious resources. We're excited about the actions that have been implemented under Goal 2, whether it is the bookstore painting, the restroom cleaning frequency system, and the refreshing of the Koi Pond. Koi Pond, folks, just lift your hands up. Please stand, please stand. <laughs> On 
all of these updates are noticeable and appreciated. There has also been a focused effort to extend the boundaries of our campus in a virtual manner by increasing the number of Facebook likes from 721 to 1,071 and relaunching the web page for our Cultural Arts Center. Not to mention we took the time to press pause on our efforts in Cass County in order to develop a more comprehensive approach to reaching our students next door. Last year we discussed developing policies that protect future fiscal year budgets from past year transactions and policies that allow our places to be reserved and used in the most efficient manner. So I'm happy to report today that we've implemented these policies in addition to developing criteria for a campus funded professional development program, deploying space reservation responsibilities to the point of need and developing facilities use bus sessions to ensure that we know and agree how to best serve our clients. Our four, fourth goal, processes, takes into account not what we should do, but rather how we should do it. So we decided to be transparent by making our notes from the president's leadership team meetings and cabinet meetings available for review because we believe that hallway banter and hearsay have no place among a group of intellectuals. We even diversified our mode of communication, creating the Longview Focus, increasing our, social, um, our use of social media, don't forget to like my page, uh, sending out the monthly Nooks note, and starting an e-newsletter for the campus, and that returns next month, so stay tuned. Our president cabinet consistently meets twice a month and includes representatives from several different departments, division, and governance associations. Within objective two of this goal, we developed a framework for making critical enrollment review decisions with the goal of erring on the side of our students. We also developed a pilot process for a proactive advising for student success model, which is a testament to our ability to focus, hey, hey, despite our immediate challenges. In the long view, all of our programs, the curricular, co-curricular, and extracurricular, would be intentionally linked to respond to the whole student. In this fifth goal, we aspire to capture the mind of middle school students, renew and sustain past relationships, while we educated our kids and the young at heart via community education. That is the reason why we hosted our seven middle schoolers last December, which some of these lifelong residents mentioned it was their first time on campus. But I digress. We not only renewed our relationships with the Summit Theater Group, we actually helped them to identify Longview as their place of residence. We partnered with the city of Lee Summit on a co-branding campaign, and we also developed new relationships with the Kansas City Chorus of Sweet Adelines and the Truman Heartland Community Foundation. Will Gerb and Ryan please stand for your hard work? Yet it was not enough to bring the community to us. So we decided to go out to the community. So we became members of Leadership Lee Summit and Leadership South Kansas City because it's always better to seek to understand before we're understood. We invited new friends to work alongside us in our pursuit of the arts and we continued to play a significant role in the Missouri Innovation Educational Ecosystem. The six gold practices compels us to honor the unique attributes of our collective history while creating new opportunities and contributions. Our long view encouraged us to have a sustainable su succession plan so we could not only enjoy events today but also tomorrow. So we invited Fred back to walk and run. We boasted a record number, uh, a record turnout to watch the kites take to the sky and we were happy. <laughs> we understood what it meant to serve both on campus and off campus while honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Then because we're a learning centered campus, we started our journey with helping our students understand that everything counts from day one. In the seventh and final goal progress, we made the promise to ourselves that we would endeavor to remain a data informed campus and be ready to respond to the question, how do you know? You see, at this point, I would imagine for many other colleges or even campuses, 
Some would say that we've accomplished enough during the first six months. But not Longview. Not the professionals who are Laker blue through and through. So get ready and get excited. Because during this academic year, we will initiate the work of the Presidential Commission on Inclusiveness. And they will begin their work of helping our campus retain and attract a diverse cadre of personnel and students. We'll welcome, orient, and mentor our new colleagues in a consistent and professional manner. We'll encourage all full-time Longview-based professionals to identify at least three actions within the blueprint that inspire us enough to take action. We'll develop a roadmap and help students to understand how to gauge their progress along their academic journey. We'll figure out the best approach to support and equip personnel who are focused on our international student population. And that's not all. We'll continue to update the campus aesthetics and utilize our spaces and storage in the most efficient manner. We will open a new enrollment management center in late September so we can serve our students in a most excellent way. We will ensure that our students have access to key student life offices and at the same time, spaces to reflect, meditate, and pray as needed. We will continue to broaden our monthly service, well, excuse me, we will continue to uh, ensure that students have availability uh, to our services at all times because we realize that life does not begin at 8 a.m. and end at 4.30 p.m. We will work to ensure that students feel safe during the day and the evening, and in the event they need to contact us, they'll know which number to call. We will be great stewards of this Earth's resources and do our part not to take more than we actually give. We will convert worn benches, right, Dan, into works of art and finally determine whether we have a greenhouse or not. We will adopt the road that should have already been ours, and then we will chirp about it as we get back into the tweeting arena. We will update our web pages, pictures, brochures, and bulletin boards, not because it's a major strategic item, but because it's the right thing to do when you're an excellent organization and people are expecting to see the present and future and not the past. Except in the legacy room, that is over in the library, which will also be updated with new things that we can take a look at to honor our legacy. And that's not all. We will share a vision of what this campus can look like, not only today, but in years to come. And that's not all. We'll develop a plan on how to make our academic program stronger while keeping textbook costs low for cash-strapped students. We'll keep you updated and trained on critical policies concerning student conduct, Title IX, and where you should and should not post flyers for all to read. We will ensure that our divisions and departments are intentional about meeting on a consistent basis and that communication continues to flow up, down, and around the organization. We will not only learn about what to do in emergency situations, but we will actually take the time as a campus to walk through what to do during emergency situations because your life may depend on it. We will help our students to uh, understand that money does not grow on trees with our student organizations, and we will outline clear expectations for our continued financial support. And that's not all. We will work together to display our strengths and our hopes as a campus and transform our new student orientations to help our students transition as never before. We will increase the number of student organizations while creating opportunities for existing organizations to realize that we're stronger together than we are apart. We will create opportunities for our students to be engaged in friendly intramural competition or as a presidential fellow all while being able to prepare for an internship or a long-term or long-term employment. Right, Linda? We will continue to create partnerships that welcome others to our campus, especially our future Lakers who may not be ready for college for years to come. We will open up our house in a new and more collaborative way, understanding that when we all that we all want, excuse me, the same thing, but sometimes there are just different ways of getting there. And that's not all. We'll pay tribute together. We'll cheer on the Lakers together. We'll celebrate our students together and celebrate their work together. 
We will run and walk together. And yes, Tammy, we'll even fly kites together. We'll celebrate a spring homecoming together next year. We'll celebrate our centennial together. And then we will serve this community together. And why, you might ask? You see, for me, the question is why not? But for those who need more of an explanation, more of a reason, more of an incentive, I simply offer this. It is because if we do not come together and muster our energies in the same direction, we will actually be working against each other. But more daunting than that, we will be at risk of losing an entire cohort of our students. Let me say that again we will be at risk of losing an entire cohort of our students. You see, if indeed we're a two-year college and our model student would graduate in two years, then think about it. At the end of this academic year, we would have spent two years asking ourselves, why should we do this? For me, the answer is simple. But then again, if you still need answers, this fall gives us 4,705 reasons why we should. Thank you for allowing me to be your president and serve you and the students of Longview, Laker Blue, through and through.